very often in our market will ask the question, how much do you want to spend? Well, I don't ask that question anymore because, you know, you have somebody say, well, I can, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm a cash buyer. I can afford anything. It's like, great. I got a $22 million condo that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right down in YLA and I'd love to show it to you. And they say, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess, I guess there is a price range. Great. What is it? Now tell me so I can help you. So we're with Tom Tezak today from Maui, yep. and we are jumping into the second home market. What agents that are currently working in a second home market should and should not be doing. And on this episode, make sure to stay until the end for his number one piece of advice for any agent working in a second home market. Tom, good to have you. Hey, thanks, Jonathan. Great to be here. So for most people that are watching this that don't know who you are, um, could you just give us a brief... Uh, snapshot of who Tom is? So sure. I'm a broker owner in a Wailea Realty boutique of Windermere, Maui and uh, Maui, Hawaii. Um, we uh, been in business. I've been in business for about 20 years now in Hawaii and 10 years in the mainland. I came from Joliet, Illinois and uh, been one of the top producing agents in the market for the last 20 years. Sweet. So we're talking about second home markets. And one of the things that we were talking about previously is a lot of agents don't even realize they're in a second home market. Um, how do you know if you're in a second home market? Well, if, if you're, if you're dialing your client and they have a, a different area code than you, there's a good chance that you're dealing with a lot of people will come into to markets. And when I say second home, it's they own a second home somewhere else or their, their, your market is where they own their second home and their primary residence is somewhere else. So like in Maui, a lot of people come in and buy a resort home. But there is also um, agents in LA. I was just talking to an agent last week and he said, well, I didn't realize, but I've got a lot of foreign buyers that are coming in and buying investment properties because they're trying to get money offshore out of China. Uh, so you, you've got this database. And if you're working with people coming in, a lot of college towns, there will be people who will come in and buy a, a house or an apartment for their kids to go to school. It's not necessarily a resort market, but yet they're doing business in that market, or there's a lot of business to be had there if you start thinking that way. Um, so I think that we just need to, as agents, not just, you know, mine's easy. I'm, I'm selling re resort, I'm selling beach. That's what people come there for. But there's a lot of other markets in the country, New York City, for, for example. People are coming into New York City to buy a condo because either they live um, out, you know, 50, 100 miles away and they're coming in for the weekend or they have a job in the city and they're coming in for the week and they're going back and forth. So knowing where some of your market is coming from and if you're seeing that, to start looking that as, as one of your spokes in your money wheel as an opportunity is, or a pillar as, as they call it too. One of the things that I see you doing a lot differently than most people is you're actually going to those other markets and I see you in here in Huntington Beach, in New York, in uh, other places around the country. Do you think that that, and I, I think the answer is yes, but do you think, and why do you do it? Um, do you think that that is something that other agents should be doing uh, well, to really understand, okay, if all of my clients are coming from X city, which is across the country, maybe I should know a little bit about that area as well? Absolutely. I think that going out and be, being involved in a network of agents, whatever it is, whether it's a coaching company, whether it's Inman, whether it's uh, Windermere, whether it's Compass, whether, whatever brand, you, everybody has opportunities and events. Go to that event. Get to know the agents in your feeder market. I, you know, I'm a big proponent of figuring out what markets your buyers are coming from, then targeting those agents. I don't like to use the word targeting, but... Uh, but getting to know those agents that become a resource for you. And then when you get to know them and they go back to their office and somebody says, Hey, I, I got a client who wants to buy in Maui. Do you know anybody? It's like, Oh yeah, I, I met this agent. And that re creating that referral network, that's so huge. And then there's more to that, you know, and educating agents on to ask the question to their clients as well. Yeah. I didn't even think about <clears throat> the fact that somebody would say, Hey, I have X client moving to Maui and that person going, Oh yeah, that guy was just, you know, doing this around here. I, I didn't think about that. What I was actually thinking of is when that person reaches out to you, 
and they say, yeah, we're moving to, or we're thinking about moving to Maui. Um, you know, tell us about Maui and this and that you could resonate with them a little bit more. Cause you know, about the coffee shops that they go to currently and the, the things that they kind of like in those areas. So if they can build that rapport with you based off of the things that they already know, um, you know, when they move to a, a place that they might not ever have seen, then you act, you at least understand what they're coming from. Right. Um, and then you're able to kind of, uh, you know, put that experience together based off of, Hey, I know exactly, you know, I know everything about that type of, not, not everything, but I know things about that market. I, I know what you like. I know that you're moving from a, you know, skyscraper living to Maui. Hey, these are the things that you're going to run into. Uh, and these are some of the problems that you might have that we already have those covered. Right. And, you know, I think it's understanding exactly what you're saying, understanding where the people are coming from. But very often, our, you know, a lot of my clients now are, they're not buying a second home. <clears throat> they're buying a third or a fourth. And, uh, you know, for the agents that are out there working in the second home market, it's so important. Are Is your consumer coming in and retiring or moving into your marketplace full time? Or are they, or is it a resident that's buying their first home? That's a mentality that you, you need to understand. And then the second mentality is, are they buying their dream home, their second dream home? So this is different than their, their first home they ever bought, the dream home. Now they're buying their, I've, I've accomplished this goal and now I'm buying my second home, but I need to justify it, rationalize it because I've never done this before. So they have a different mental space a lot of times, especially with VRBO and Airbnb, they want to make, they want to rationalize it and justify it. And for them, it's been a dream for five years, 10 years to buy a property in their place, whether it's Aspen or Vail or um, Maui or Cabo, wherever it is. So they, you need to help them work through that space of justifying and rationalizing. And then we get to the third home. It's no longer a dream. I, I already did that. Now I can. And I just want the easy button. I want it to be, exa I don't want to have to pack my clothes anymore when I go to the, to the, my beach house and understanding that for that buyer, you've got to talk to them a different way. You, it's not any longer about rationalizing and justifying. It's a, how can I make this as easy as possible for you? Because that's what they expect. If they can buy a third home or a fourth home and just let it sit, it, it's not about money anymore. It's about stress and eliminating stress for, for their, for their, in their life. Yeah. Love so, that. so, you know, we, as so many agents that I've worked with, um, they never crossed through that hurdle. They always were selling the second home and the real, the real money and the real opportunity to work with that luxury buyer, whatever it is in your market is when you can understand that that luxury buyer, you've got to talk to him a different way. You've got to hear him a different way. You can't be, Oh my God, you want to buy the most expensive house in town? Well, you just lost that client. If you're get excited. You just need to be saying, okay, great. Uh, very often in our market, we'll ask the question, um, how much do you want to spend? Well, I don't ask that question anymore because, you know, you have somebody say, well, I can, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm a cash buyer. I can afford anything. It's like, great. I got a $22 million condo. And I always have a really expensive house or condo that I'm perfect. I have a $22 million condo that, uh, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's right down in, in, in YLA. And I'd love to show it to you. And they say, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess, I guess there is a price range. Great. What is it? Now tell me so I can help you. If they say, wow, I'm really interested in that, then cha-ching again. <laughs> but, so, you know, it, it's, under, it's being able to have a conversation without skipping a beat. And when they don't want to give you information because they, they don't want to, it's just you need to get to the answer. So there's, there's really not a lot of talk going around with second home markets. There's not... Hey, this is, you know, who you should be meeting with. And this is the community. And, you know, just tap into that as far as second home markets are concerned. So one of the things that you're doing is you're building a community network of second home market agents in order to do just that, to network and to build camaraderie and to understand exactly who it is that you're sending a referral to more than just that person sold X amount of houses. This is like, I really know who that person is, you know, on a, on a deeper level. Could you talk about that? Sure. So we, you know, we, we started a, a, a website called secondhomeagents.com and it's really for agents that work in this unique little niche market of the secondary homes and whether it's in a beach community in a ski community, a golf community in, in an inner city, um, 
or for people that are selling investment properties. There, you know, there's a lot of agents that work in this market and we're, we are what I call unserved, not underserved, but unserved. There's, and being in the business for 20 years in this type of market, the technology that's created for realtors globally, so much of it just misses the mark. Like we would used to get newsletters and they were written about, um, you know, time to clean your gutters. Well, my clients aren't cleaning their gutters. Huh? <laughs> First of all, they'll, they'll never clean a gutter. They're going to pay for somebody. And the second is their house is a million miles away. So, you know, creating product CRMs are challenging for a secondary market because they give you a place to put their, their name and their address, but they don't give you a place to put their second home or their third home so that when you're marketing, when you're touch, touching them, the data is going the right direction, that the contacts are going the right direction, that the time zones are there so you know where they're at and when you're calling them. And so we're working with a bunch of different companies to try to create that little niche market that ap applies just to the secondary market agents. Uh, and so we've been making some headway with that, which is really exciting and creating a podcast that we now are just interviewing industry, you know, industry rock stars and influencers across the country. And what's the name of that podcast? It's selling the dream, selling the dream, man. It's on YouTube and all the, all the podcast channels. Sweet. So to get where you're at currently in, in the second home market arena, uh, what are some of the pitfalls or what are the, some of the things that if you were to go back uh, and go into a brand new market, second home market, and restart doing some of the things that you're currently doing, uh, what would you have done a little bit differently? So I think, you know, it's, it's interesting you asked that. I'm going to sort of go off a little tangent because so many times agents, people that are agents in a traditional market will say, okay, I'm getting older. I want to not retire, but I want to put my license in a resort district that I love, move to the Keys, move to Maui, move to Santa Barbara, wherever it is. And they're great agents where they're at. And then they show up and they crash and burn. It's, it's because they're trying to sell real estate on a daily basis like they used to instead of embracing that new style. Our clients come and go. My gestation period for a buyer could be two, three, four years. Most agents in a traditional market could never, they don't get that because they're not thinking that long term. You have to plant the seeds. You have to start the process. And sure, there are some times when I'll have a gestation period of, of four days, but I'll also meet somebody when, you know, I had a client that came in, I met him um, 12 years later after getting my drip email, my newsletter, he called me up and said, Hey, life has gotten better. I want to buy a house now. And no longer am I spending 6 million or 600,000. I'm spending 4 million. But if I would have deleted him off of, you got it. If I would have deleted him off my list or quit thinking yep. about him, it would have been gone. So I think you really need to change your brain a little bit from what you used to do. If you're a brand new agent coming into a market, I think, you know, the best or brand new agent, any agent coming into market knowledge, being able to talk about the product. If you're in a condominium community, know everything you can know that's printed so that you can be perceived as the expert. That buyer that's coming in, that's got 10 or $5 million to spend or 500,000, whatever the market is when it's expensive, they are really smart. They have that disposable income to do it, but they don't necessarily know the nuances of that building or that high rise or that neighborhood. You can know all of that stuff just by, by being book smart. And once you convey that, all that information and you, I like to say you just puke information on them and, and stuff they don't know you get, you gain the reputation or you gain the ability to be an expert in it and that creating the trust. So you said that, and I thought it was funny that some agents will send out a drip email talking about cleaning the gutters, which really doesn't apply to anybody in that type of right. market. Um, you said then that, you know, you're sending out drip emails and uh, what was once a 600,000 is Six, now 4 million. Right. Uh, and then you said, we like to puke out information. What's, what's some of the type of information if you're saying, hey, no, don't send out drip emails talking about the gutters. What's some of the, well, what, so, is, what does some of that look like for you? So in my email, it would just be a newsletter. What's happening? Um, when, I, when I was talking about the gutter email, so there's pre-made email or yeah, newsletters. Yeah. That, that's what I was talking about. So we can't buy a pre-made newsletter. So yeah. we have to, which is time saving. If, if there was one that you could just plug and play, that would be great. Um, but the information that I'm going to, so we have a, in Maui, there is a book about condo stats. So it tells you how many units are in the, 
you know, how many acres are on the property, um, whether they do vacation rental, whether pets are allowed, uh, when it was built. And so being able to get all of that information for each one of the complexes, especially if you're going to be working regularly in a certain market area and you meet those people being able to just convey all of that information that they don't know. You know, you can go on Zillow and you can get a lot of information. You can go on re- realtor.com and get a lot of information. Go to, go to those places and or think about what, are you, what questions are you getting asked that the people can't find on Zillow and, and know all of that stuff. And then start putting that out on your social media channels and say, hey, you know, Zillow doesn't have all the answers, but I can tell you the maintenance fees for all of these places or whatever that hot button is that they're asking you because Zillow is a great aggregator of information, but they aren't tuned in, especially they're not tuned in to resort markets where, you know, how far are you from the ski run? It's not going to be on Zillow. Uh, what the name of the complex is, you know, they're in Zillow if they only put addresses, they don't put the name of the complex. When people vacation, they know the name of the complex. They don't know the address. So it's knowing those little nuances and how to pick those things apart and be the source of the information, be, be the knowledge broker, so that when agents are, or when consumers are looking for somebody, they feel comfortable that you have more knowledge than they do. For somebody that's living in a second home market, but the majority of their business is not coming from out of the area, it's just coming from their sphere locally, how do they tap into that? Hey, I want to add that second home aspect into my business. Um, So for me, I worked open house uh, seven, when I started, this was a long time ago, 20 20 years ago, we still work open house every day, seven days a week. Uh, When I started, I worked seven days a week, uh, 29 days a month. Do you recommend that now? I still do. I still, you know, I- Seven days a week? Um, well I did then cause I had yeah. two little kids and I needed yeah, to yeah. make payments. So, but I recommend a commitment to that. Absolutely. Because uh, social media is great. Um, telling the story is great on social media, but quite honestly, unless there's an agent in your market that is really connecting the dots, consumers still want to have that experience to feel like they are working with somebody that they know, like, and trust. And if they show up and they walk into your open house just because they met somebody on social, they don't have this commitment to them where if they walked into your open house or they walked into your floor duty, again, in a, in a resort community, that's pretty prevalent. And you were able to answer their questions. You became that person that was the knowledge broker. They're more likely to work with you and you get them in your car. I do a thing called a nickel tour. Um, Say that again. A nickel tour. Nickel. Nickel. Like okay. In, not a dime, but a nickel. A Got nickel it. tour. This is, you know, I'm showing my age here. Um, and I, my goal is to just educate them. I'm not looking to sell them. I tell them, look, I'll take you for an hour and a half. You walked into my open house. You're wasting your time. You're not on the beach. You're not on the golf course. You're not on the ski slope. You're in here talking to me. And you don't know what you were walking into. Well, that's silly. How about you just give me an hour, hour and a half of your time. You tell me your parameters, how much you want to spend, what your your size preference is, your location. And in a day or two days, I will set you up, take you out in an hour, hour and a half. And we'll just, I'll give you an overview of everything that fits your criteria. In that hour and a half, you're going to know exactly what you do want or don't want. And if you're not buying this trip, that's okay. I don't care. Because if I know, if I can get them in my car when they do come back to buy, I'm going to be their guy because I just provided them an educational journey. You know, some people call it being a tour guide and I think it's different. I'm not, yeah, you know, we build over the long term in the resort market, not in the short term. So by doing those tours and taking them around and it's amazing when I'm done with them at the end of that hour, hour and a half, I'll just look at them and say, you know, if I could give you, forget about the price because I've already known we've isolated their price point. So with, they can afford what we've shown them. If I could give you, if I would give you any one of the properties, which one would you take? And I ask the, the both partners, husband, wife, partner, whatever it is, and I ask them independently to answer the question. And at that point, it's a beautiful thing because you'll then extract from the husband and the wife or the two partners what they're really thinking. Because very often, I know how I am with my wife. I, I know what I want. And I don't necessarily ask her what she wants. But when the third party comes in and pulls it out of both of them, we create a conversation and it's a, it's a beautiful thing because we can narrow down what you did and didn't like. And I'm, I'm the bad guy in the middle. And we open up that conversation door and we, I've had so much success 
by going there. And very often we'll do the nickel tour and I'm not selling you anything. And before they're gone, they're buying something. Or I now know what they like and I can pick up the phone a month or two months or three months later and say, hey, Jonathan, you know what? The property just came available in the building that you liked facing the right direction. Let's buy it. And you say, okay, great, write it up. And I do a lot of business sight unseen um, because I'm co- I've already conveyed to them that I know what they want and I know what I do in fact uh, understand what they're looking for and they have the trust in me to say, okay, make it happen. You, If I were to ask you, hey, what markets are coming into Maui, you've already told me, hey, this, this market, this market, this market. Um, how did you find that out? Did you uh, just, hey, these are the people that continue to come to me, so I'm just going to keep tapping into that? Or, hey, let me look at statistics that show... X amount of people from this area are buying X amount of percentage here. Where we, can I, I, I utilize our title company for that. They okay. know where. So, is we, there anything specific that they're looking into or tapping into, or well, it's in their mailing address for okay. their tax bills. So, every, okay. if you buy property, mailing address. mailing address for their tax bills. If you if you own property, you've got to send your tax bill somewhere. Most people want to make sure they get it paid so that they're sending it to their primary residence where they get most of their. Yeah. So. So with that information, we're able to identify, you know, I think 32% of our off-island, or 48% of our off-island buyers come from California, a bunch come from Washington, a bunch come from uh, Oregon, Nevada, um, Colorado, and then the last couple percents from everywhere else. Got it. So if somebody's listening to this and they haven't heard the first 22 minutes and they just pop on for the the last couple minutes or the last couple of thoughts, what would you say is a piece of advice to somebody that's in a second home market currently? Um, what would you give them as a piece of advice, whether it be good advice, bad advice, do this, don't do that? Um, I think, again, be sure that you you know everything about the market you're working. Don't necessarily try to work the, like for me, I don't work the whole island. I work a two mile wide or I mean, I'm sorry, a six block wide by four mile long stretch. And that's all I work. You know, I'm super hyper-focused. I market that. And I think knowing everything you can about that particular space uh, is, is the best best you can do, or the best thing you can do for your, your business. And how exactly are you marketing the fact that you're only working, like you said, not the entire island or not the entire county for a lot of agents or not the entire you know, state uh, right. that some people are trying to do, but really just focusing on that niche. Um, how are you allowing that to resonate through your marketing? So, you know, I, I ran an old school print media campaign years ago, and that has lasted forever. But I used to run an ad that said, um, I know nothing about West Maui. So I live in South Maui, and which is a resort district. And then the other resort district is West Maui. So I ran an ad that said, I know nothing about West Maui, and I know even less about Hana. But if you want to know about South Maui, the market that I know and love the best, call me. And it was super powerful because I, what I did was I said, look, I don't know everything, but I do know this. And I am the expert in this marketplace. And it was, it was hugely successful. It's not only knowing who you're for, but knowing who you're not for and allowing them to know that, Hey, this is who I am and this is what I do and where I work. So that way, when they do contact you um, and they didn't know that, um, they don't think of you as, hey, that person didn't return my phone calls or they didn't do this or they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, we already, we've already we already put that out there. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, as I've progressed and now I have a, a small team and I do have an agent on my team, he grew up on Maui. So now it's like, hey, if you want South Maui, I'm your guy. But anywhere else on the island, um, Jordan knows it. He grew up here. He knows he knows the overall part of the, the market. So now we're changing our, our story a little bit, but being clear about it. Nice. And I think it's definitely important to be clear on your story. Um, going in, back into that niche market, is that something that right off the bat you just jumped into? Hey, this is where I work. This is who I'm for. How long did it take you to get to that place? If somebody is kind of in that, uh, you know, just like in the middle, should I do this? Should I do that? Like, Man, own it. I, I, I owned it. But I, was, I had a lot of experience, a lot of marketing background before moving to Maui. And I jumped in and within, within three months, I was running that ad and I was owning it. You know, that's my belief is, is that whatever you're going to do, wherever you're going to be, if, it, if, if you believe it to be a solid plan, a, a, a program, own it. 
And if it doesn't work, then change. But And it worked really well. Sweet. So again, everybody that is listening, Tom Tezak, you can find him on social media at... Uh, Tom Tezak yep. or TomTezak.com, uh, Lifestyle Maui Real Estate Team or Lifestyle underscore Maui. You should be able to find it on so on uh, Instagram. Facebook is Lifestyle Maui Real Estate Team. And the website that you mentioned previously? Uh, secondhomeagents.com. Sweet. And um, second home is spelled... Second, you can be either way. I, I just got to make it clear. 2ND or S-E-C-O-N-D. Sweet. And uh, again, we, we've been talking about second home market. We've been talking about the need for a... a go ahead. Can I just, I just want to share something because I know you have a lot of listeners that are in primary markets. Yeah. Can I just sort of share a missed opportunity that so many of them are, are, are missing? That's exactly where I was going. Okay, go for it. No, I'm done. <laughs> okay. So now, <laughs> so I, so every last couple of years I've done, I've done well, maybe $30 million in sales for the last couple of years. And what's amazing to me is that out of those 30 or so transactions, about a million dollar average sale, um, I've only paid out about two or three referrals. That means, so I had 36 transactions, six of them were local transactions, 30 of them were people coming in from somewhere else. Out of those, I paid four referrals, which means I had 26 sales that were from buyers or sellers that came from another market that own a primary residence somewhere else and weren't referred to me. And I just think that's, it's a shame. And so what I would encourage your listeners to do is if you're working in a traditional market, if they, if your average income is about $90,000 or higher, odds are that 10% of your database is going to be buying or selling a second home in the next two years. And odds are that another 10% will be buying or selling an investment property in the next two years, which if you just do the math on how big your database is, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of referral opportunities. And all you need to do is ask them whether you're in a conversation. Hey, do you have a second home? Are you thinking about buying one? Go on social media and say, hey, where do you like to vacation? You really don't want to put, are you thinking about buying or selling a second home on IG or on Facebook? Because it's, it's invasive. But if you say, hey, where are you, where are you thinking of, where, where do you love to go on vacation? Do you go on vacation a, a lot to one place, go off in private chat and say, Hey, have you thought about buying a vacation home there? Just start that conversation with people and you'd be amazed. I have, I've asked several people, I said, do you know how many, how many of your clients in your database own second homes? And they would say, well, no, but I know a couple of them do. I said, Oh yeah. Did you refer them? They said, no, they came back and they told me they bought it. I said, well, why didn't, why didn't they ask you for a referral? They said, I don't know. It's like, well, because you didn't ask them. Did you tell them I can help you buy your property in Maui? I can help you buy your property in Aspen or in Lake Tahoe or in Orlando or wherever it is. They're consumers. They're not in the real estate business. They don't realize that you can connect them with the best agent going instead of just finding somebody on Zillow or stumbling into some knucklehead in an open house who offers to give them a nickel to her. Lay the groundwork out. That's my whole point. Yeah, and I think that's huge. I actually had a piece where... I showed myself in the local community, but then I showed a map of all of the agents that I knew in all of the other areas. So that way, if they weren't buying a house or selling a house here, they would still come to me to, you know, uh, allow me to r refer them. And that's huge, not only because obviously you can get a referral check from it, um, but it's huge because that person has, you've built so much trust with them that they can come to you for, something that's completely out of the blue, but actually going out there and, <laughs> excuse me, asking, um, I think is huge. And uh, at the end of the day, though, the, you know, everybody says that the worst they can say is no, or the word, yeah. no, we're not moving or no, we don't want to do that. But if you don't, then you, there's so much missed opportunity available. Right. I mean, just, just the simple thing of putting an email out with just the subject line, are you thinking about buying or selling your, se your second home? Leap to the assumption. In the email, say, if you are, I can help you. I've, I've got a network of agents all across the country. Please let me know. Now, if you send that out to your database of 1,000 and my stats are right, that means that there's about 100 or so people that are going to be into that market and you get five of them that respond and say, yeah, how did you know? It's like, well, that's what I do. I'm a professional. And you just picked up, you know, three, four or five referral opportunities. And it's, how much did it cost? Nothing. One email. So a lot of people will bury it into other places and then their newsletters. I recommend that you just put it straight in the subject line. And, you know, 
I used to say, oh, ask them if they're buying in Maui. But I realized there's people are buying second homes all over the country as a, as in a primary residential realtor. You just need to ask them where and, and then create that network. And you'll find that you'll have a feeder. You, you are a feeder market to somewhere. Sweet. Again, Tom Tezak from Maui. Make sure to look below for his social media profiles and websites that we've mentioned here on the podcast. Again, if you have any questions, reach out directly to Tom regarding second home markets, uh, what you should or shouldn't be doing, uh, just some advice, and really just to allow that community of second home markets uh, agents to continue to build. Again, Tom, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Jonathan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.